Good morning. It's Thursday, and very glad to be with you. Gathering in God's Word. Um, we have a, I don't know, it depends on how you look at it, a very dark story or a sort of funny story. Um, no, maybe not funny. Funny's not quite funny, the word. Funny's not the right word? No, I well, don't Well, let's so. just say um, it should not seem to us as crazy as it does at first. So we're going to sing. Uh, a hymn about trust, because this is another, we're talking about Abraham gradually growing in faith. Well, this is a, another example, in this case, Lot, of not trusting, uh, not believing. So, it's hymn number 713, From God Can Nothing Move Me. <clears throat> his daughters. Now Lot went up out of Zoar and lived in the hills with his two daughters, for he was afraid to live in Zoar. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she arose. The next day the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father, let us make him drink wine tonight also, then you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and called his name Benami. He is the father of the Ammonites to this day. So you remember um, National Enquirer? 
uh, or uh, Weekly World News. Uh, National Enquirer used to be in the grocery store checkout. Karen, do you, is it still there? I, don't, I haven't seen it. Mm, Either the, if, it's, if it's still there, then it's toned down. Because it used to be really crazy headlines, right? I mean, outrageous stuff that people do. And, you know, alien abductions and weird things people claim. Well, there's a, there's a meme that is a, a consistent theme that goes on on the internet a lot of times about Florida man. And uh, uh, if you look that up, <laughs> use DuckDuckGo instead of Google so, you don't, so your search isn't tracked because you don't want uh, anybody to know you're looking for this stuff. Florida man charged with assault with a deadly weapon after throwing alligator through Wendy's drive through window. <laughs> um, uh, Florida man gets tired of waiting at hospital, steals ambulance, drives home. Um, Florida man breaks into jail to hang out with friends. Oh, no. A Florida man apparently <laughs> capturing crabs, <laughs> painting anti-Hillary messages on them, and releasing them in the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> uh, uh, Florida man denies drinking and driving, says he only swigged bourbon at stop signs. Um, my favorite one, I think, is, uh, oh, here's Florida man manages to misspell school on warning sign twice. And it's got great big words, you know, school written on the pavement. Uh, and he's, you know, working for the city and he paints it S-C-O-H-O-L, <laughs> which resembles alcohol, doesn't it? So <laughs> I, I wonder if that's involved there. And then what was my favorite? Oh, that Florida man. Arrested for driving stolen vehicle while monkey clings to chest. Uh, <laughs> Florida man pauses police chase to rehydrate with stolen Capri Sun. Says smoking crack makes him thirsty. <laughs> and, uh, Florida man gives police exonerating dash cam video following traffic accident. Accidentally includes video of him robbing beauty store. And this I think is my all time favorite. Florida man admits killing goat and drinking its blood for pagan sacrifice would still like to be senator. <laughs> He's the candidate for senator. I'm, you know, not a serious one. But crazy stuff happens, doesn't it? And that's what this story reads like. It reads like a tabloid news story. And it, and it is because people are tabloid people. That tab, people in tabloids are real people. Those things really happen. People do crazy stuff. Why do people do crazy stuff? Why do people do crazy stuff? You ever think about that? It, it's, it's not like they're necessarily really unusual people. In fact, the Florida man thing beca has become a thing because of these headlines. Florida man does this or that. But uh, from, from what I've read, it, it sounds like the reason that it's Florida is because Florida has exceptionally broad open records laws. And so... Every dumb thing that anybody does is easily obtained by the press. And, and the press loves to come up with crazy stuff, right? No, so it's, it's happening all over, not just in Florida. It's happening all over, not just in Zoar, uh, and not just in this book of the Bible. But there's people in every society, in every language, in every ethnic group, in every nation... In every income class, who do stupid and outrageous things. Why? Why do people do that? How do we sometimes get caught? Uh, I don't know. It just sort of led up to this. Here I am standing with my one hand on this and one hand on that. And I, honey, I need help. How did you get in that situation? Well, um, I just thought I could just reach this. If I could just... It starts with one little thing, right? And then it suddenly turns into something we didn't expect. What started it here? Why is why why are Lot's daughters getting him drunk and sleeping with him? Uh, not because they necessarily um, well they grew up in Sodom that didn't help. That was Dad's choice. He raised his daughters in Sodom, and then they could have lived in Zoar, right? Why not live in Zoar? Well, he just was in a city that was destroyed. By God, right? I'm not going to live in the city. I'm going to live outside where it's safe. And yet, think of that. He was in Sodom. And, and God sent angels to warn him 
Uh, and and they they uh, delayed judgment. They did. I mean, they did all these things to protect him and his family. And the only reason there was any damage, the only reason his wife was lost, is because she longed to be back in Sodom. No. Uh, God warned him and cared for him. He has evidence of God caring for him, and yet he will not trust and stay in Zoar where he could find a wife, where his daughters could find husbands, where they could live uh, an appropriate life. I'm going to go live in a cave. It's like if, if your smoke alarm goes off in the middle of the night and there's a fire in your house and you get out and your house is burned down, but your life is saved because of your smoke alarm. What's the logical next thing for you to do? You're going to think that it would be to buy a new, get a new house and install smoke alarms, right? No. The logical next thing for you to do, according to Lot, is never live in a house again. I'm going to live in the woods because last time when I was living in a house, it burned down. God protected him, but he didn't trust. Having seen God's protection, he didn't trust. That's true of you too and me. We're like Florida man. Uh, God shows us every day, I will give to you your daily bread. But what about tomorrow? The manna comes again, but I better gather as much as I can because tomorrow I might not have any, right? And, and look what God says in this hymn that we, that we just sang. Each day at his good pleasure, God's gracious will is done. He sent his greatest treasure in Jesus Christ, his son. He every gift imparts. The bread of earth and heaven are by his kindness given. Praise him with thankful hearts. So stop your worrying and, and your, your failure to trust in God. Your children pick up on it and your grandchildren pick up on it. And they then act in ways that you are, I don't understand, I raised them to trust. Except you didn't. We don't. That's why Lot and his daughters ended up where they did. Let's, let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, it is a tremendous responsibility being a parent or grandparent. It's a tremendous responsibility, even when we have no children of our own, that others see us and they, they see our faith or our lack of it. And we profess faith in you, and yet, and yet our failure to trust, our fears, our worries, uh, after seeing your faithfulness, Lord, our, our lack of faith leads others astray. Give us peace. Give us peace not just by us being relaxed and calm, but by us seeing your goodness and graciousness and trusting in you. Grant that today we may not flee the city uh, protecting ourselves. Rather, let us trust in you. And stay wherever you lead us and know that you will provide and protect us. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.